Have you ever tried updating your cluster and got stuck by migrating VMs because a certain CPU feature was no longer supported by the Libpert and the QMU stack and thus requiring you to power cycle those VMs? Then you're in luck because myself Soham and my colleague Shivam from Nutanix are going to talk about similar issues. And we hope that we can pick the interest of the community to join us in finding solutions for such issues. So we'll start with a high level introduction to CPU features uh, and them, how they're modeled and maintained across the Lipput and the QMU stack. Um, bear in mind that this is not going to cover how CPU features are communicated to, uh, QM, uh, to KVM via IOCTLs or uh, how CPU ID instructions are emulated by the hypervisor. We'll be strictly focusing to how CPU features are modeled and maintained across the Lipput and the QMU stack. So whenever libvirt uh, starts up, it looks for a specific file, which is located in the var cache libvirt QMU capabilities directory. And this file contains the different QMU capabilities. So uh, typically the file looks as shown in the slide. Um, it contains uh, the path to the QMU uh, binary, and it contains other informations related to the hosts that are obtained from QMU. And uh, the it uh, has the uh, the different CPU features which are available on the host, and are also usable or not usable. And uh, in addition to that, it also lists uh, different CPU uh, model uh, models and the versions that can be usable by the um, by Libvirt on this uh, host. So uh, in case the file is not present, then libvirt uh, will try to create the file. And to create the file, it will take help of uh, QMP commands. And the first command that it use, uh, issues is the query CPU model expansion uh, QMP command. Using this, libvirt uh, is able to get the list of um, usable or um, uh, unusable CPU features from the QMU binary. And typically, the um, uh, output of a query CPU model expansion command looks as shown in the slide. It's a JSON which contains the list of CPU features and correspondingly whether they are usable or uh, not usable. Um, next, it uses yet another QMP command, which is the query CPU definitions. And using this, uh, libvirt gets a list of um, usable or unusable CPU models usable or unusable CPU models uh, from the QMU. Now, these CPU models are the ones which libvirt can use for describing uh, uh, the CPU of any guest VM. Um, so once the file is uh, generated, uh, libvirt uh, loads the contents of its file and keeps it in the memory. And using this content, libvirt is able to uh, give outputs for several uh, commands and one such being the DOM, uh, DOM capabilities. And typically the output of DOM capabilities uh, looks as shown in the slide. It contains the path to the QMU binary and again it contains uh, the, uh, um, the different CPU models that can be used uh, for describing VMs on this host. Uh, for example, here we see that it can be the VMs can be uh, used uh, uh, in the pass through mode in a host pass through mode where the CPU will be using uh, the VM CPU will be using the host CPU uh, exactly. Else, we can provide. Have you ever tried updating your cluster and got stuck by migrating VMs because a certain CPU feature was no longer supported by the Libpert and the QMU stack and thus requiring you to power cycle those VMs? Then you're in luck because myself Soham and my colleague Shivam from Nutanix are going to talk about similar issues. And we hope that we can pick the interest of the community to join us in finding solutions for such issues. So we'll start with a high level introduction to CPU features uh, and them, how they're modeled and maintained across the Libput and the QMU stack. Um, Bear in mind that this is not going to cover how CPU features are communicated to, uh, QM, uh, to KVM via IOCTLs or uh, how CPU ID instructions are emulated by the hypervisor. We will be strictly focusing to how CPU features are modeled and maintained across the Libvirt and the QMU stack. 
So whenever libvirt uh, starts up, it looks for a specific file, which is located in the pair cache libvirt KMU capabilities directory. And this file contains the different KMU capabilities. So uh, typically the file looks as shown in the slide. Um, it contains uh, the path to the KMU uh, binary and it contains other information related to the hosts that are obtained from QMU. And uh, the, it uh, has the, uh, the different CPU features which are available on the host and are also usable or not usable. And uh, in addition to that, it also lists uh, different CPU uh, model, uh, models and the versions that can be usable by the um, by libvirt on this uh, host so um, in case the file is not present then libvirt uh, will try to create the file and to create the file it will take help of uh, qmp commands and the first command that it use, uh, issues is the query cpu model expansion uh, qmp command Using this, libvirt uh, is able to get the list of um, usable or um, uh, unusable CPU features from the QMU binary. And typically the um, uh, output of a query CPU model expansion command looks as shown in the slide. It's a JSON which contains the list of CPU features and correspondingly whether they are usable or uh, not usable. Um, Next, it uses yet another QMP command, which is the query CPU definitions. And using this, uh, libvirt gets a list of um, usable or unusable CPU models uh, from the QMU. Now, these CPU models are the ones which libvirt can use for describing uh, uh, the CPU of any guest VM. Um, so once the file is uh, generated, uh, libvirt uh, loads the contents of its file and keeps it in the memory. And using this content, libvirt is able to uh, give outputs for several uh, commands and one such being the DOM, uh, DOM capabilities. And typically the output of DOM capabilities uh, looks as shown in the slide. It contains the path to the QMU binary. And again, it contains uh, the, uh, uh, the different CPU models that can be used uh, for describing VMs on this host. Uh, for example, here we see that it can be, the VMs can be uh, used uh, uh, in the pass-through mode, in a host pass-through mode where the CPU will be using, uh, the VM CPU will be using the host CPU uh, exactly. Else, we can provide um, a custom um, uh, model which describes the host best. And in this example, it's iStack server, along with uh, extra features which can be uh, enabled or disabled on this uh, for the VM. And in addition to this, the contents of the file is also used by libvirt to perform some validation checks um, during the QMU process launch. So far, we have been talking about how libvirt uh, leverages the use of uh, QMP command to fetch all this information. Now, to close the loop, let's also look at how QMU um, um, gives output to the QMP commands. So for that, QMU maintains the CPU definitions in a file called CPU.c. And this is placed inside the x86 directory, uh, directory inside target. And this file typically contains the definitions for each and every CPU models that is supported. And along with several versions of those CPU models based on uh, what um, um, CPU features they contained or what CPU features uh, have been dropped from them. Now, with this background on how CPU features are modeled across the Libvirt and KMU stack, we can start looking at few issues that we have identified at Nutanix in our production environment. So the first major issue that we want to discuss is the feature deprecations. And the example that we chose here is the deprecation of the pconfig feature. So pconfig was a non-virtualizable feature that got accidentally added in QMU 3.1. And correspondingly, um, 
the libvirt, uh, it got added in the libvirt code base as well um, for the Icelic server CPU model in uh, libvirt 4.8. But soon enough, it was uh, the mistake was caught, and it uh, the pick config feature got removed from the QMU 4.0 binary, and uh, subsequently uh, it was also removed from libvirt as part of libvirt 5.10 release. But by then the damage was done, and we couldn't um, do anything about a migration path that we exposed uh, whenever we tried to migrate a VM from a source host to a destination host which has a libvirt vers version le uh, lesser than 5.10 but the corresponding uh, QME version was greater than 3.1 um, this is a well-known bug and um, has been um, reported in the upstream community as well and moreover uh, the libvirt site uh, fix that was added now, uh, as you can see, it simply um, checks whether the custom model provider is an Icelic server or not. In case it's Icelic server, it will um, drop the pconfig um, flag and will not uh, send it to the QMU command line. But the catch here is that um, that some users might be using uh, even lower base uh, CPU models like KVM64 uh, for uh, maximum migratable, uh, migratable support for the VMs. And in such cases, um, this fix wouldn't work and the pconfig feature can't be um, hidden and they will be passed on to the QME command line, which will eventually fail. Um, we'll continue with the feature deprecations with yet, uh, with yet another example. And in this time, it's the MPX flat. So MPX was a CPU feature which was introduced by Intel in its Skylake architecture. And correspondingly, it got added uh, through the entire virtualization stack of KVM, KMU, and Libvirt. But it was later identified uh, as not very useful. And hence, it was eventually removed from kernel 5.6. Subsequently, subsequently, it also got removed from the KMU uh, 4.0 release. But uh, on the Libvirt side, the MPX definition continued to stay behind in the Icelic server CPU definition. Until that, it's still there. Now we see two issues here. So even with the KMU set fix that drops the MPMX flag, um, it can happen that the there might be guest applications within the VM which were compiled with the libmpmx flag by GCC, and these uh, applications will now suddenly start complaining because the MPMX flag is now dropped post the migration. And the second issue that happens uh, is due to libvirt maintaining its own CPU definitions. So um, on a physical Icelic server host, if we run worst capabilities, then libvirt uses its CPU definitions uh, to identify the physical host uh, CPU. And in this case, since the Icelic server uh, CPU model definition inside uh, libvirt uh, contains the MPMX flag, which is no longer usable, it um, it identifies that the uh, Icelic server's um, CPU definition cannot be used for classifying a um, physical host. And as a result, uh, Verge capabilities will identify the physical host uh, with an um, Intel model, which is uh, from an earlier generation. And this is a known issue and has been reported upstream. The next issue that we want to highlight is the tight coupling between the libvirt and the QMU versions. And the example that we chose here is um, resulted around the Spectre meltdown uh, time frame, and that too in a, a nested virtualization context. So we have here I highlighted a kernel commit uh, where um, whenever the Intel spec CTRL and the Intel STIBP flags are set, uh, then the kernel having this commit will expand the spec CTRL bit to use the AMD specific bits for IBRS, IBPB, and for the Intel STIBP bit to use the AMD specific STIBP bit. And this we can see in the uh, example. So let's say on a bare metal Icelic server host, uh, which has uh, Libvirt 7.2 running on it and KMU 4.2 installed, we try to power on a VM with the CPU in a host pass-through mode. This can be seen in the domain XML. 
and also in the QMU command line. Now, once the VM is powered on, inside the uh, um, L1 VM's uh, guest, uh, the kernel has the commit that we discussed before. And as a result, if we perform an LSCP operation, we will see that the flags IBRS, IBPB, and STABP are exposed. Now, let's say we want to enable nested virtualization within this L1 VM. And uh, for that, we have libvirt 7.0 running inside the L1 guest. We um, do a verse capabilities and we see that the AMD bits, IBRS, IBPP, and STABP show up as extra features reported in the um, verse capabilities output. Now uh, we have a slightly older QMU installed on the inside the L1 VM and uh, this is KMU 2.12. And to this uh, KMU, if we pass these um, extra flags that we got as an output from verse capabilities, we'll see that KMU starts throwing errors saying that um, IBS is a, not a known property. This clearly shows there's a, a coupling between the uh, version of Lipfort and the QMU that we can use on a particular system. Next, we would like to talk about another um, um, issue or a thing of concern, uh, which is the Libvirt uh, checks uh, on uh, validation checks on host and guest uh, CPU compatibility. So initially, Libvirt used to check the host CPU features by probing the host using the CPU ID um, uh, instruction, and the uh, and it used to uh, store those um, host model informations. And eventually it used to use those uh, host model information to uh, validate against the guest CPU configuration that has been requested to find out whether the guest CPU configuration and the host CPU configurations are compatible with each other or not. But then later on, um, as part of the patch set, which is mentioned here, uh, it was decided that uh, Libvirt should move away from probing the host. Instead, it should rely on the underlying you know, hypervisor, the KMU, to um, tell um, Libvirt uh, what are the host CPU features. And then uh, Libvirt could use those host CPU features to validate the guest CPU configuration that has been requested. Now, um, we then saw that uh, it, this uh, introduced a regression and uh, as a result, um, there was a bug um, which uh, threw error whenever um, um, whenever uh, the some uh, CPU configuration was requested by uh, for the guest VM, which was not supported by the um, host according to QMU. So uh, this got fixed in uh, Libvirt. Uh, in the commit that has been pointed out. And uh, now what Libvirt does is it uses a union of CPU information, both from QMU and from probing the host uh, using the CPU ID instruction. And together that forms the uh, CPU information for the host. And Libvirt uses this information um, to validate the requested guest CPU configurations for the compatibility. But uh, ideally, uh, Libvirt shouldn't be using the uh, ho um, host probing approach to get the host information and instead should be uh, relying entirely on the QMU side information for the host. So we'll see in future, uh, in next future slides, like how we can tackle this problem or is there any solution for this or not. So all this, uh, all the issues that we have uh, so far been talking about can be root cause to one major point. And that being, there are multiple sources of CPU definitions across the Libvirt and the KMU stack. And because there are multiple definitions, sources of definitions, this causes uh, the mismatch between the definitions across the stack, which has led to multiple issues uh, that we have uh, seen. And, uh, Another issue that we see here is that QMU itself supports uh, the versioning of the CPU models, but Libvirt doesn't uh, give users the freedom to choose uh, the uh, QMU models and the versions. And 
Secondly, we see that maintaining um, multiple uh, CPU definitions across the stack has increased the development time and the complexity to maintain uh, the uh, maintain the uh, CPU features across the stack. Meaning that if a new CPU feature is added to KMU layer, uh, KMU layer, then the same has to be added to the libvirt as well, and this needs to be monitored continuously. And the reverse is also true, meaning that if a suddenly a uh, CPU feature has been removed from KMU, then someone from the libvirt community also needs to monitor that and remove it from the libvirt codebase as well. This always increases the complexity of the developer's workflow. So having discussed these issues, uh, let's go on to discuss uh, if there is any uh, fix uh, or solution available for them. But before moving on to discussing the fix, let's reiterate the problem statement. So what we see that uh, uh, KMU supports multiple versions for a single CPU model. For example, iSlick server itself has got six different versions. But uh, 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 libvirt's virtual storm capabilities do not expose those to the users, um, and it simply gives uh, gives us the base CPU model name. And uh, hence, uh, libvirt also doesn't allow uh, its users to choose any version for the CPU definitions, and uh, only the uh, only the base name models are uh, can be used for defining the CPUs. And this is again passed, uh, this base model name is passed to the KMU command line and KMU uh, then makes the decision of choosing the version based on the machine type. This again leads to a, a coupling uh, between the, uh, the CPU versions, uh, CPU model versions and the machine type, which is something we would like to simplify. So what do we propose? We propose that libvirt should rely completely on the KMU CPU models and um, it should be so the first DOM capabilities uh, command and libvirt should now be able to um, expose the different usable versions uh, that are defined in KMU to the users. So as in this example you can see if we now run virtual DOM capabilities we can um, get to see what are the uh, we can see the, the, the what are the isolate server versions that can be used for uh, defining CPUs for any VM on this particular host. And in turn, the users can uh, look at the output from the virtual DOM capabilities and choose the, uh, the, the intended CPU model version and pass it to the uh, uh, DOM XML. And libvirt then uh, looks at the uh, CPU model version from the DOM XML and uh, passes it to the KMU uh, command line. Another thing uh, that we want to change here is that um, we want to get rid of the CPU um, host and guest uh, compatibility version validations. Uh, those checks we want to remove it from the libvirt side, and um, this will uh, basically. Um, unnecessarily remove the burden on libvirt on uh, probing the host for getting the host details and then comparing with the guest CPU um, models for compatibility checks. Instead, uh, what we want to do, we want to add a new check in the libvirt layer called hypervisor. And this is uh, something similar to as having the none check, which basically skips the validation. And in addition to that, it will pass the enforce flag to the KMU command line, as can be seen in the example. So what this will do is that this will delegate the CPU model uh, validation checks and the, the compatibility and the validation checks to the KMU. So how does the fix work? So uh, first, uh, we uh, using the fix, we are able to give a common CPU model and version for both libvirt and the KMU stack. Uh, with this, we will see that the issues around the pconfig deprecation uh, can be uh, avoided. Uh, libvirt uh, can now directly use KMU models along with the versions 
um and so uh, so the uh, onus is on the qmu side uh, versioning of the models to deprecate um, any older cpu features and then qmu and then libvirt can use those uh, model version uh, model versions to uh, gracefully deprecate the cpu features uh, secondly, um, Libvirt no longer needs to maintain the responsibility of the guest and the host CPU compatibility check. So what are the limitations of this approach? First, this approach only works for the Libvirt and the QMU stack. It doesn't cover the other Libvirt drivers like LXC and um, Zen, etc. And secondly, uh, this is not the magical answer that will fix all CPU feature issues that we have discussed and many more that are still present in the stack. For example, the tight coupling of Libvirt and the QMU versions is still not resolved by this approach. Uh, this is something which uh, will need uh, further discussions and further um, uh, opinions from the community to, be, uh, to fix it. So in conclusion, we'd like to conclude by saying that the main purpose of the talk was to pick the interest of the community in looking at issues and uh, design around the maintenance of CPU models across the Libvirt and the QMU stack. As part of this talk, we have tried to come up with a solution that simplifies the uh, CPU model uh, handling and its workflow across the Libvirt and the QMU stack. We look forward to sending out patches of our solution onto the community mailing list. And we hope to get uh, some interesting feedback and um, improvements on our proposal. Thank you. And with that, I'm open to questions from the audience.